Good evening, everybody. How's it going? Uh, that's me, Comic Crack. And tonight, um, I wanted to do this for a little while. Um, I've been working kind of nonstop. Um, so I just didn't have the time. I didn't read much last week other than Joe Matt's stuff, which we're going to talk about briefly. I do have a video on Joe uh, from years ago at this point. Um, so I didn't do any videos this weekend. I just couldn't. So I've wanted to talk about him for a little while. Um, it, so Joe passed away on, what was it, September 18th, I believe. Uh, so just very recently. Um, and I've been reading like a ton of stuff. I think that there's a lot of people that are going to be <laughs> way better suited to talk about Joe. Hello, Gorvidal. Talk about Joe than me, but I'm going to do my best kind of what he meant to me. Obviously, I didn't know him. I've never met him. I'm purely just a person who knows him through the comics. Um, there's been a lot of people uh, when he passed. There was a lot of people. My social media, my, my Twitter had really seemed like it exploded with people from all areas of my social media that were talking about him everybody from artists to fans to writers to cr creators of all kinds um, talking about joe and his work and what it meant to them um i would direct you to uh, a fantastic uh, comics journal article it came out what's today 27th yeah it came out today uh remembering joe matt with a bunch of creators uh most importantly chester brown and seth and honestly seth's uh, piece remembering Joe Matt really got to me quite a bit. Even just thinking about it, I can feel it a bit. Um, his was his was beautiful. They were both like they were all really nice stuff, but that one was really impressive. Um, he was part of that kind of Toronto three. Joe Matt, Seth, and Chester Brown. They were kind of the core group of guys uh, when Joe moved from I think Philadelphia first to Montreal, possibly, and then to Toronto. I think that's how it went. Um, so check out the car, the, the comics journal article, um, our friend Ryan Carey on his Patreon. I, I think it might've been a Patreon only article. I don't know if it was one that was for free. He also wrote about, uh, Joe Matt, uh, did a nice kind of tribute to Joe as well too. Um, and like I said, all over social media, there's been a whole bunch of people for kind of a long time talking about Joe and his comics. Um, the manga chat guys, which is Simon uh, Hanselman and um, who the heck is the other guy? I apologize. I'm blanking on the other artist's name. Uh, sorry about that. They have a great show. I don't watch it all the time. I've, I've seen a few of them. They had a kind of special talking about Joe, talked about him for, I don't know, 40, 45 minutes. That's well worth checking out as well, too. So I've been reading a bunch of Joe stuff. I just read some more tonight, actually. Um, so we'll kind of start at the beginning. We'll just look at some stuff and I'll kind of show some highlights of some of the things I've been reading or rereading rather again. Um, I'm not finished rereading all the stuff of his that I have. I'm a good chunk of the way through though. He didn't have a huge output. I think his his uh, um, solo book, uh, Peep Show, I believe it was 14 issues. There was talk for years. Seth talks about it in his uh, Remembrance of Joe for years that uh, he was working on another issue <clears throat> apparently from stuff i've been reading online that issue was complete and i believe it's in the hands of a publisher in france please don't quote me on any of this stuff go and look for it so hopefully that means it's actually complete and hopefully that means we do get something else um peep show is a hell of a series it's been collected into the stuff that exists in single issues has been collected, I think, in three books. Um, Poor Bastard, Spent, and um, another one that I'm drawing a blank on right now. Um, yeah, I, I don't remember what it is. Anyway, you can find that stuff. He also had a, a collection called Peep Show uh, that's kind of sort of magazine size. I do have a copy of it somewhere. I don't know where it is. I'm sure it's in one of these boxes surrounding me here. Um, and that collects a bunch of stuff, including some of this early stuff that we're going to look at that first uh, appeared in Snarf. So when I was reading Chester Brown's 
remembrance of him, he had mentioned the first time that Seth and him had seen Joe Matt's work. Um, and it was the first time that Joe had anything in print. Uh, issue number 11 of uh, the Fantastic Kitchen Sink Anthology Snarf. It's hard for me to remember where I first discovered his stuff, but on rereading this today, it was most definitely this or the drawn and quarterly stuff. So I think he did three consecutive issues of Snarf, and then I believe it was an issue one of drawn and quarterly that he made his next appearance in. He'd done a bunch of issues of Snarf, I think five in a row here, and then I believe he was in most, if not all, of the Drawn and Quarterly anthologies. Um, I've only got a handful of those. I don't have Drawn and Quarterly number one. The earliest one I have is number two. I haven't read the Drawn and Quarterly stuff. So it was either the Snarf or the I don't remember if I was getting this stuff at the time that it came out. It is 1989, so it is possible, but I, I, my memory just doesn't work like that. What I do remember about first discovering Joe's stuff is the impact that it had on me, like, right from the get-go. Um, you know, I think that uh, there's a bunch of us in this comics kind of world uh, who feel <laughs> awkward at the best of times and a little socially inept and a little kind of distant from things. So Joe, like a lot of the um, autobiographical cartoonists, especially in the underground and alternative scenes, their honesty was refreshing, um, terrifying. Um, it, it kind of made you feel okay. Hello, Daryl D. It kind of made you feel okay with the shit that you were dealing with. If someone was kind of bold and brave enough to kind of pull the veil back on things that they were going through and things that they had done. Uh, Chester does talk about that blurring the line of like, was this Joe Matt? Of course this was Joe Matt. Were there things that maybe weren't 100% true? Yes, and he tells a little funny anecdote about uh, when Joe kind of first does a comic strip of when he first met in person jo uh, uh, Chester and uh, Seth. Um, <laughs> Chester talks about we met him both at the same time, but he portrayed it as he met Chester first and then met Seth. So kind of a funny little story where you think he's going to talk about something else, but uh, really nicely done. They're, they're both fantastic tributes. So this is from his first published work. And again, this early stuff from Snarf, I believe, was collected in that peep show. And right out of the gate, some of the things that you get from Joe... Um, some things you first need to know about Joe Matt. This is what he looks like. This is what he acts like. He was raised Catholic. He's never had a relationship to speak of. So it just kind of goes point by point of things that you should know about him. And right out of the gate, you see some of his kind of trademarks, uh, especially in the early strips, the arrows that uh, appear kind of describing things and sometimes just blatantly calling him out. Um, I think is really great stuff. And you get to, you get a little glimpse into kind of his neurosis, I guess, uh, his neurotic nature. Um, and of course we get introduced to Trish, uh, who's a big part of the early peep show and, and the, all of these early comics. She was an animator who lived in Montreal and he went to live with her, kind of moved to Montreal to be with her. I think eventually they both moved to Toronto. Um, and he he talks pretty plainly about his relationship with her. So much so that in an early peep show issue, he talks about he, he talks about a time where he hit her. And apparently when that issue came out, um, that caused a real big stir. Um, he also seems to be one of those creators like some of the guys who maybe are the best at uh, pulling back that veil and talking about things and not putting themselves in a good light, it ends up coming back to kind of bite them in the ass a little bit. Um, he apparently got a bit of backlash. This is just from reading recently when that stuff came out, and I think a lot of people ended up just dismissing him. Um, Seth talks about in the, the comics journal remembrance there he talks about all these things that you saw about Joe <laughs> Most of it was true and it it wasn't cute. It wasn't 
It wasn't like a little quirk that made him. It was irritating. <laughs> Seth says he was just he was the most irritating person that he's ever met. But his his love for him uh, was huge, as you can tell by the way he writes about him. Um, so it is a again. There's this there's this thing of like putting yourself out there and exaggerating your kind of potential flaws um, or these quirks and traits that may be on a certain subdued level and putting them really at the forefront to, to kind of highlight them um, is it's pretty incredible stuff but honestly just his cartooning I read the peep show stuff before I dug into this snarf and the, the leaps and bounds his art in these is fantastic I really love it it's kind of it's the stuff that brings back the most memories for me because it's the stuff that um, like I said, I first discovered at a really formative time reading some of this kind of material, these undergrounds and alternative comics. So his art really jumps. There was one here, I think it was in this issue. Yeah. Um, so this is from Snarf with a Richard Corbin cover there, Daryl D. Um, issue number 12 of Snarf is what we're going to look at here. There's the Corbin cover. There's an amazing strip that just speaks to his ability to, um, just the kind of mastery that he has, or had rather, over comics and storytelling, where he breaks down, he talks about in this strip, let's, let's look behind uh, what it takes to create a strip and what all these things mean. But in it, he ends up talking a lot about how comic strips are put together and how this style of storytelling is done uh, for him and, and obviously for a lot of cartoonists. Um, you're in for a treat today, folks, because today I'm going to give you a behind the scenes look at how my strips are done. Talks about things like putting a date on the top, which it was big for him at this time, kind of making it a journal, giving some timeline. Um, <laughs> talks about installing a little sprinkler system to the back of my neck to produce all those crucial sweat beads which you can see up here um, he shows off the different masks that he puts in front of himself to give him these different emotions um, so he kind of keeps breaking it down the one thing he doesn't know where they come from are those uh, there's one thing I've never been able to figure out it's those little floating labels with arrows they just seem to happen unpredictably it's uncanny I don't understand it and then you see an example there if it'll focus. Let's bring that full page. Come on, baby. You know you want to focus. Anyway, it is there. And then finally in this panel over here, we're inside the strip with him as he's looking out the window. Again, breaking that wall um, to, to show us that he's sitting on the shitter as he's talking about us. Or talking to us, rather, and walking us through this. Um, created uh, kind of zone for him so really got a kick out of that one um, so when Chester and Seth read this issue uh, they were immediately taken with his art um, way in his storytelling so that led to them meet this guy we gotta meet this guy and they became kind of an inseparable trio for quite a long time um, we won't go through all of these stuff, I just wanted to show you a few of those. And then, uh, number 13. Uh, 14 and 15 is where you can find more of uh, Joe Nat's work in the Snarf Anthology. So, after issue number 13, he goes on to Drawn and Quartered. Um, and seeing it kind of in a magazine size. I know we've talked about it before, although we It's worth talking about it again. One of, one of the classics that this one is kind of seared in my memory is this play. Yeah. 
who knows how much I, I haven't looked into how much exactly he had before that first appearance in Snark but you get the impression that he had quite a body of work that he was working on just at home for himself um, and I'm, I'm curious what the impetus was for him to finally go for it and approach some of these companies to put out his work let's see here yeah here we go and again, the beauty of dating things at the top is you can get that little bit of a timeline. Yeah, I'm not sure what my camera is focusing on today, but uh, hopefully you're seeing some of that and we'll try to bring it back a little more. The other thing that he did with some of these drawn and quarterly strips was the, the, the panel density just got... Um, the pages just got more and more dense. Uh, he tried to cram in as much as he possibly could on one page. But it always read. It uh, him and his buddy, I think Kevin was his name, Kev. They used to talk in Donald Duck voices. So this is a whole strip of uh, them just kind of communicating in that voice. And it, it, again, it works so well. It's fun. You can hear the voices in your head uh, um, as they just talk about that. <laughs> it's kind of uh, yeah, so I mean, the guy was amazing. Really, 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 on this side of the comic movies, I mean, sorry, the magazines, seemingly deal with it in some way, even though I'm sure he dealt with things on a much bigger level, personally, that obviously he, I have no idea about, but I can only, can only imagine. So, the last thing we'll look at here. Um, another one where I, I don't have all of the issues, but boy, oh boy, uh, am I on the hunt for this is uh, this is the show. So this is from the four of 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 the four
But it, again, it does a really good job of kind of blurring the line of he has this couple that he meets and he writes very, uh, very honestly about 